Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and it's getting a little crowded in my studio because I've spent a couple of months now designing four different patterns for the headdress style masks for the Lion King play. And I've got other videos that show you various parts of the process of putting them together. I've got one that shows you how to uh, dye some natural raffia so you can have manes on your lions that are different colors to kind of tell the characters apart. I've got one on how, to, how I painted the eyes. I've got one that shows you how to put the pieces together so it'll be really strong. And I also have one showing you how I used wood glue instead of paste in order to put the paper mache on there. Just one layer makes it really, really strong. This is a really light mask. Most of these are going to be worn by younger kids, uh, maybe middle school kids, and I wanted to make sure that they were going to be light enough and comfortable enough for them to wear. I have to admit that I've had an awful lot of fun with these. It, as soon as one of them gets done, I have to walk around in my house wearing them because I just think they're really cool. But in this video, I just basically want to introduce them to you and kind of let you know why I thought I needed four different patterns for these lions. Now a lot of people have actually used my big lion, the, the one that's up here, and have turned it into Lion King headdress mask. But that really wasn't what it was designed for. And it doesn't have this back portion that would make it easy for you to turn it into a headdress mask. So the folks who have used that pattern have kind of been on their own trying to uh, make it really work as, as a Lion King mask. So I thought it was about time for me to go ahead and make some that were, were engineered to go up on top of your head and that would have different characters. So you've got Simba. Uh, this can also be used for Mufasa. I would probably dye Mufasa's mane a slightly different color, maybe a nice chocolate brown, uh, just so that you can tell them apart. He's got kind of a wide jaw. One thing that I didn't know was going to happen until after it was done is that he has a nice open expression, nice kind of a soft, nice look to him when he's looking straight at you. But if you bend him down just a little bit so he's looking up under those eyelids, he gets a little um, stern. I didn't know he was going to do that, but I think it's kind of fun. <laughs> then we have the female lion. She's got a different shape to her eye. She'd be kind of fun to, to put some girly makeup on. I didn't, I didn't do that. I made him kind of realistic, but it, it would be kind of fun to play with that. So the shape of her eyes is different from Simba's. Um, she's got a slightly softer nose. Um, the, the shape of her head is just a little bit different and it does have a smaller head. So it's much more feminine than the big guy. No mane, of course. Then we have young Simba. Or young Nala. I put a cowlick up on top of his head kind of um, as a suggestion that someday he's going to have a mane. It would also help to tell young Nala and young Simba apart if you made Nala's nose pink. But if you do that, make sure that grown-up Nala has a pink nose too. This one, have, this one also obviously has a very different shape to his head. He doesn't have that deep crease in the middle of his forehead because he hasn't developed those jaw muscles yet. He is just not, not big enough, not strong enough yet. He's just a little guy, but he, someday, he'll get there someday. And then we got Mean Old Scar. He's got kind of a pinched look to his face, kind of narrow and thin. Um, he's got a very different shape to his eye because I wanted him to look like he was scowling all of the time. So he's kind of angry. He's one of those grumpy guys, you know, that, that thinks that the world owes him something. And he's always angry because he's not getting what he thinks he's due. I, I put off putting his scar on there for a long time because it, I don't know, just felt kind of mean, but I did finally go ahead and do it. And of course I dyed his mane so it would be really easy, even from a distance, to tell him apart from Mufasa and Simba. So even if you aren't quite close enough to see the differences in the shape of the face, you'll still be able to tell them apart from the, the colors of the mane. So they're all different. They've got different characteristics that are built into the shapes uh, and that makes painting them really, really easy. You can go ahead and cut the pieces out, tape them together, put on the paper mache, and then you put your own personality in there when you paint them and put on their manes. Now I have to admit that I kind of cheated when I painted these. I found some tan craft paint in my studio. This particular kind is called Teddy Bear Tan, but 
any warm yellowish tan would work. I just added white to it and it came out really nice and I used the same color for all the lions. The exception is Scar because he was going to have a darker mane. I added a little bit of burnt umber and burnt sienna uh, to his fur. And then I put white over the muzzle and put white around the eyes. It, basically the painting was really, really easy. Now with the exception of the baby ones, I also used some, some watered down burnt umber to make a shadow behind the muzzle. And I also put a shadow underneath Scar's cheek just to kind of uh, bring out the pinched look on his face. You can also change the size of the caps, by the way, so that it'll actually fit the actor who's going to be wearing them. I didn't change the shape of this one, so it's just a little bit big and a little bit loose. But I did cut down the cap for the big male lion, and it fits on quite tightly. And I also suggest that you put a strip of felt all the way around on the inside. That makes it a lot more comfortable to wear, especially if you tighten it up so that it sits really tight against the head. So that's a short introduction to the four new patterns that I have for the Lion King Lions. If you're interested in making some of your own, you can find all these patterns out at my website at ultimatepapermache.com slash Lion King. And be sure to watch those other videos too. Uh, each pattern comes with all the full instructions, but you'll want to watch those videos too, just to give you a little bit more help in putting them together, painting the eyes, dyeing the, the fur, just a few extra things that I go into in more depth. So go check those out and then come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.